All right, so here's an image, a raw, the fuck? Here's a raw file um, that I've never edited from Soundtrap and Humphreys at Wolf Trap. Opening it in Camera Raw. So obviously, lots to do. Um, bring the highlights down. Highlight recovery. It's only gonna do so much, but bring some good stuff there. I'm gonna boost the shadows, get those corners. Um, I'm gonna vignette it a little bit because we don't need super detail over there. I'm also gonna desaturate the blues. Not too much, but just enough so it's still colorful. Um, in raw, I'm gonna boost that shadow. At the same time, I'm gonna bring the blacks in. So it gives it that flat look, which I personally, that's sort of what I do these days. Um, but it's also to help with the HDR toning itself. Um, bump the clarity up a little bit, not too high. I'm gonna reduce the noise in Photoshop to 38. No sharpening, and I'm gonna open that up. Let me make it a little yellow. There we go. Opening that up. So here we have a semi edited, globally edited, nothing in particular has been edited. I'm gonna duplicate it, open up the HDR, bring in the detail in. So look, I mean, maybe the, my full frame, you know, has a little bit more detail, but this is also a really good image to begin with. You know, it wasn't too high of an ISO. You have a lot to play with. And there was obviously a lot of detail you could see. You know, bring the highlight slider down. You don't want it to get gray like that, but you want to see the detail. Maybe a little gray because you're going to blend it. Um, I'm also going to bring that saturation down because those blues are just too blue. Hitting OK. Two images, dropping it, getting rid of that one. You can see I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. It really speeds up your uh, stuff here. So that's the beginner. That's the HDR. 66% looks pretty good to me. Still a big difference, but seems realistic. It's not cartoony at all. Um, what I'm seeing right off the bat though is we got some weird lines. We got this is off. And the crowd looks a little off. And this is off up here big time. So I'm gonna merge those layers to the top. I'm gonna use lens correction. I don't always use lens correction in Photoshop just because it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. It does some weird stuff, but it's definitely the best bet. I also wish I could turn this dial a little. I wish it was a slider and not a, a sphere. Um, that's too much, so negative 0.8. Still too much. I really don't know what I want to do. Negative 0.5. Let's just hit enter on that because we'll use the perspective crop tool. So what that did is it actually zoomed it all the way up too. So I didn't have to scale it. So your corners were moved as well. But I mean that straightened it out pretty damn good. Check with the ruler again. That's pin straight. It also got rid of that awkward little thing at the top that we didn't really need. So in the middle there, this area right here, it's a little blown out. Bring the highlights down there and then add some contrast in. I'm just going to paint it in from here on out. Painting, 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 painting. Painting, painting. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good to me. You can also use a color balance layer. It's, I mean, it's really as good as it's going to get as far as color wise. You don't want to tint these shadows too much. You can see the tint going on there. So even though that adjustment is very slim, it 
still, you know, bring some true color to the whites. You can always use white lights to really try to balance everything. Maybe add a little bit of magenta to get that green out of there. That's still too much. I'm going to drop the opacity. That helps blend it with the original color. So very little of a difference, but enough of a difference that I like it. Obviously, editing and what you want out of your picture is always going to be personal preference. You can even mess with this hue saturation a little bit. You can sort of blend colors, get it truer to what you think you saw, what you really saw. You know, kind of maybe tweak it and add some purple at the bottom there. And I'm going to use one more levels layer for the top. I'm going to use that gradient filter again. There. So it still has that flat look, flat sort of matte paper look that I prefer. Oops, there we go. And that's the final image. It's pretty spot on clear here. One more thing that you can do, merge all those layers again. Merge all the layers is in uh, layer and it should be right there. It's not image, edit, merge existing layers. The keyword shortcut I'm using to do that is shift option command E all at once. So what I want to show you is sharpening, which sometimes can help. Sometimes it's way too much. You don't really need to do it. But in this case, I think there's enough detail to sharpen. I like unsharpen mask. So I'm really looking at him here. He's the, the most in focus part of this photo. So a little halo-y. You can see how it's adding these shadows kind of a route and that's going to be a radius thing. So you bring the radius down a little lower, you can bring the, the percentage up. I'm happy with that there. Let's bring it out to 100%. That looks super clear, almost too clear. So I'm just going to hit OK because I'm happy with how that looks right here. Looks a little weird down in here, a little over sharp. Let's see the difference. But I'm going to leave it. I think it looks great. So, I mean, that's a final image. I'm going to flatten it because I don't need the layers. I'm not coming back to it. I'm going to hit save. I save them as a PSD. It keeps the highest quality for printing or publication or whatever. I'm going to hit save. Let me go back to the bridge. It's going to pop up here. So, that is. This a little bit bigger for you. So that is the edited raw. That is the edited PSD. And that is the original. Original, edited raw, PSD. Those three together. Big difference. Looks great over here. Still a great photo. Better photo. The best photo.